Okay, so uh, in the demo today, uh, we will have an, an RPA scenario that will handle a GDPR use case. GDPR and uh, in Europe and the CCPA or California Cons Consumer Privacy Act in US grants individuals the, the rights to access the personal information a company holds about them. The company needs to uh, provide that information in, in one month, and that can be uh, challenging because it requires understanding of the request, running searches, identifying relevant documents, and uh, redacting sensitive data, which may not be possible to do efficiently with, with common IT platforms. So for that, we will use MicroFocus RPA. Now, this is how the, the use case looks like. Uh, in our case, the uh, individual will be an employer, em employee who wants to um, have an, uh, a request to, uh, to uh, for his company to provide uh, the personal information that uh, this company ho holds about him. He will do that using the service desk tool that the uh, company provides. Uh, of course, we can integrate with multiple service desks, but in uh, this use case, we will use MicroFocus Max. So the end user will uh, open this service request. Then uh, the compliance manager will be notified in order to give the approval for the process to continue. Once the approval is given, the RPA uh, workflows will, will take over and the robots will interact with um, the applications from which um, they will extract the personal information. Now, of course, uh, in this use case, we, we use two applications, but uh, imagine that um, uh, in companies, there are many more applications that uh, manipulate uh, personal information like uh, health applications, like benefit applications, pension applications, and, and so on. But for the purpose of the, the demo, we keep it simple. We interact with two applications. Uh, we are using UI interactions, and uh, we we do that because uh, of two reasons. First, uh, usually this kind of applications uh, does not give access to APIs to to the automation teams. So the only way in which you can interact is is uh, via UI. Also, there are applications like, for example, the payroll application that uh, we are using that do not expose uh, at all the, the APIs. So again, the only way to interact with, with it is um, via UI. So the RP robots will uh, mimic the human uh, actions in order to extract the personal information. Once uh, the robots collect the data, they will attach that, that data to the uh, request that uh, ha has been opened. And uh, the compliance manager will uh, review that the fulfillment happened uh, complete, uh, successfully. Uh, and next, um, another RPA workflow will be automatically triggered in order to send the email with the personal information to the requester. This time, um, this interaction is based on API. We have an Office 365 an integration based on, on API in order to uh, send the emails. Now, of course, uh, this use case can be extended to uh, any other uh, GDPR use cases. For example, uh, GDPR also offers a uh, possibility and um, give the rights to the individuals to, to request for the data to be deleted. So imagine that uh, we can con con uh, continue this use case by having some robots that uh, will perform uh, this process as well. But uh, for now, let's uh, switch to the screen sharing and start the demo. So our demo starts from the self-service portal of our service desk. I will use my own profile in order to uh, create this uh, request. And I can find the, the service offering in the HR category. I can go select it. I can read all the all the information that uh, is provided about uh, this DSAR uh, service request. And I need to provide the business justification why uh, I need uh, this information. Of course, it, it shouldn't uh, be too, too complex. Um, the company needs to, to provide this uh, kind of information to any individuals. I submit the, the request. And uh, once the, the request is submitted, the compliance manager is notified over email. Uh, now I will show you uh, she receives also this new approval task in her uh, SMAX uh, interface. She can see all the information, who is the requester, 
also get the, the information when the, the request uh, was submitted and all uh, that kind of information. Once she is done, she, she will approve the, the request in order to continue the, the process. And now uh, automatically, the RPA workflow will be launched. So we move, we move to RPA Central to see that the workflow started automatically. And uh, this is the time when the robots um, will take over. So we have the two robots that will uh, start to interact with uh, our applications. The first step is pretty much the same, the login step. And then uh, each robot will interact with its own application. So on the left, we will see the interaction with the Workday application. And on the right, we have the interaction with Payroll application. The first robot, um, we choose to uh, get the information and uh, copy it to an Excel uh, spreadsheet. So all the steps are uh, done automatically by the robot. Of course, I. Um, I blur out all, all the information because I, I don't want my information to be displayed. On the second robot, uh, we, we gather the information by uh, taking screenshots from, from the application just for the purpose of the demo uh, to show you that uh, we can uh, take information in, in two different ways. Now, as you can see, the robot on, on the right already signed up. In the meantime, the, the robot on, on the left uh, didn't do that. And uh, of course, we don't want uh, our applications to uh, remain designed, signed in on, on the machines. So I will show you after the, the use case how we can fix that. Now, going back to our use case, the compliance manager uh, received the uh, task to review that the fulfillment completely uh, completed successfully. She, she can validate uh, this step and the RPA workflow that triggers the, the email sending will start. As you can see, the requester received the email with all, all the screenshots attached to his uh, personal information. Also, the Excel uh, strategy is attached, which can be encrypted, by the way. Uh, he can open uh, the Excel spreadsheet and uh, he will see that the, all the information is inside. Another step that the, the robot will uh, do at the end, uh, he will update the request, providing a, a solution message, a resolution, a resolution message, and the, the requester can accept or reject the, the solution. So this was the, the use case that we, we opened now. Let's see how we create the RPA workflow. So, I'm moving to the workflow designer, RPA workflow designer, in order to show you how the process was created. So this is the workflow that interacts with uh, our work, the application. We have recorded, pre-recorded all the steps, and now we can drag and drop the, the recorded steps into the workflow in order to create an end-to-end uh, -end, uh, scenario. For example, in this case, uh, we have the workday example. The first step is uh, we log in into application, we collect the information after that, we start the, the Excel and copy the data into the Excel. Pretty much the same for the payroll application. Of course, uh, this time we don't have the interaction with uh, Excel because as I said, we collect the information using uh, taking screenshots. Next, uh, I created a, a wrapper a workflow in which I included uh, the, the two workflows uh, that I created before, the, the UI uh, interactions, and also because in a, in a workflow, uh, we can um, have both uh, UI steps and API steps. You can see here that the, the last step, uh, in the last step, we use API in order to integrate with our service desk uh, application and attach the documents. Now let's go back. Uh, you remember that uh, the, the robot didn't perform the, the sign out uh, from the word the application. So let's see how we can fix that. For that, we will come back to the workflow designer in, into our workday workflow. And uh, let's see uh, what happens in the last step that uh, the robot executes. So we can drill down into it. We will see all the, all the steps that are executed by, by the robot in, the, in our RPA activity. And uh, with the introduction of the new RPA activity designer, we can uh, do more advanced editing 
in this script. So we will not need to uh, re-record again the, the entire script if we, we forgot to, to do a sign out, for example. For that, we will open this activity in Activity Designer. All the information will be synchronized in, in this new Activity Designer, where we will be able, as I said, to, um, to do more advanced editing on even on, on the existing uh, script. But in our, in our case, uh, what we want to do is to add uh, new steps into the, um, into the recording. So to do that, uh, we put our mouse cursor at the end of the script and we start uh, the, the recorder now from the RT Activity Designer. We select the, uh, that we want to, to interact with the web application. We open our uh, Workday application and let me just move the, the recorder panel to see the action that uh, I will take. I will click on the profile picture and click on the on the sign out button. These steps will be uh, recorded as, as you can see. And uh, once I, I, I'm done with that, I will click on, on the stop button and I will be able to see the new steps are added in my script. Now I can save the, the changes that I did here and I, ca I can close the RP Activity Designer. And because the synchronization works both ways, all the changes that I did in the RP Activity Designer are seen back in my uh, workflow designer in, in the RP Activities. So you can see that uh, the sign out uh, steps are now available here as well. And without uh, any other um, manual steps, this will be updated also in the workflow where this RP activity is used. So next time when the workflow will run, the robot will sign, sign out as well. The last thing that I want to, to show you in the demo is the new ROI dashboard. So in the new ROI dashboard, uh, we can see information about all the bots that uh, have been deployed uh, in our system, how uh, they perform, for example, uh, for our collect personal information a bot, we can see how many times uh, uh, it ran, how many times it, it failed, for example. Also, uh, we can see here a spike in the last day, maybe because of a security breach, uh, we, we had more requests. So uh, we can see that uh, we had a, a spike um, of uh, how many times uh, this uh, uh, bot uh, has been triggered. We get um, more information about the uh, about the, the bot, the average execution time, for example, as I said, the, the results distribution. And uh, also we can see the amount of uh, uh, minutes that we save. So the time that uh, has been saved every time when, um, when the bot runs. Uh, also the amount of money that we save by running this bot. And you can see here, for example, I, I, I will refresh and this data is updated, a request, a new request just finished, and the data is updated in the, in the ROI dashboard. Of course, as Alina mentioned, all these widgets are uh, customizable, so you can create your own widgets, you can modify the existing ones, and uh, you can provide all the um, ROI information for every bot. Uh, 